before we listen to the audio, I want to apologize. We've been having some technical issues and also the network has been crap for some time now. And this is the best that could come out. The original files, the individual audio files got corrupted, but I was able to salvage it. And thank you so much for sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Because what, 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 they can't blast me. I don't go, I don't go listen to that. Because we can call it to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the second episode of the fourth season of the Self Taught Novels. With myself, that's your brain, Max Odan Kwasalas, Ben Paul, and Ellie Kulin Um, Unfortunately, Ellie wouldn't join us for this episode, but then, um, he, he has contributed a lot to this episode and he's with us in spirit. And I don't mean he's uh, there. Wait, how, how has he, he contributed? Contribute <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I need to bump. <laughs> hey, Ellie, you see how your voice is all you out? Uh, uh, I hear you, Bob. Ellie, if you are listening to this, you should really come back and answer. Unless you put together some material we both find the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to be nice. But <laughs> Ellie wow. wouldn't join us. <laughs> Ellie, would, Ellie wouldn't join us for this episode, but then uh, the episode has to be recorded. Anyway, guys, how far? How far? How, how have things been? Uh, as, as when you call me. Wait, is every day you start? Okay, sorry. I'm sorry for cutting you. I know. I mean, you should go. Like, when the best right, best right things people they do. Ah, uh, wait. Ah, I had. I figured you were saying that every day I go first. So I figured I wanted to go first. Oh no, no, no. So, ah, uh, yeah. This week has been pretty okay. Just that the news this week has been pretty interesting. I mean, my life is pretty much the same. Staying indoors and all that. Nothing. You work, sleep, eat, work out a bit, and. I've also started skincare. So skin what? <laughs> skincare. What's your routine like? Uh, I think it is okay. Um, I, I started using the original product. So it's basically cleanse. Um, uh, wait, yeah, cleanse. Then use a serum, and then you moisturize. Then they use sun protection. For as in the morning, and then but I start my evening. first skincare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured I should do something nice for myself. Hey, I start my day use serum. Hey, Jack. Ja. Uh, <laughs> skincare. Skincare. Anyone talk can, can use. Uh, oh, that's nice. Uh, I mean, whilst before the like hopefully when the world gets back to normal, people should see me like in a new in a new skin. So that, that's the goal. <laughs> You're a very vain person. Salah, you are very vain. Uh, I'm a very boy. You're a very vain person. person. Ah, the world, if this will get back to normal. Debbie Jano. He can so, ask him, ask him what he's doing. But now he's doing some face care, hand care, hair care, and so <laughs> can I see right now he's looking fair. Like the same go. way, the same way you are working out because like, you want good health, improve your whatever physique, you want muscle up and all that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Mm. <laughs> okay, so anyway. what what has been up with me? Uh, well, like Silas put it, for most of us, it's been the typical week. Uh, aside the hustle and bustle of work, uh, yeah, nothing eventful. No skincare range, nothing like that. No charcoal therapy, nothing like that. I'm not trying to scrub up nicely for any girl. Like Silas, uh, just keep I'm it No, no, but, but why this explain? Who has <laughs> we didn't mention a female's name? I should. Nah, 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 but in, in, like you said, the world will come back to normal and 
you know, we have to get our A game on with respect to our looks and all. But I don't see it that way. See, I'm I'm focusing on the inside, meditating, you know, being mm-hmm. a deep. Founder, I haven't bounced you before. Like now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, so that it's yeah, na okay, say yeah, no be. Ah, wait, Ma- Max. So then they're working out you and you. What was the goal? It was just a way to put all this testosterone to use. You understand? Single boys association. You will get. You will get. Ah, hmm. uh, so uh, you you ain't your idea. Like there's a woman component in it, right? Okay, what are we discussing for this episode? <laughs> <laughs> You just saw yourself. Hey, I don't know. Hey, I started my MPhil classes. So far, so good. Yeah. Ah, how's that going? Ah, uh, masters of philosophy. No, it looks like it's going to be an interesting road. But then I'm prepared <laughs> mentally. Why is they inter- interested? Define interested. And um, we've had about three classes so far out of five. And in two of the classes, what's the student lecture ratio? What's the student lecture ratio? One is to ten. Okay. Yeah, mm, that's a lot for masters. Hey, then it's really an in demand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so I asked someone who was doing someone who was doing agri, and he said it's one is to two. Hey, I tell you that people are not that interested. Yeah, I, I think it probably differs by program. Yeah, by program, in, yeah. Yeah, like demand. In, in Kenya, it's the yeah. engineering forms um, a huge factor of the student population. I can even get you, okay, I was going to say something. I could say, I could even get you the, the actual figures, but then it's privileged information. I don't make it public, but then I have the actual mm. figures here. Anyway, um, that, that was a weird flex, but okay. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> but um, two... Um, two of the courses, I'm not writing exams for mid-sem and end of semester. Um, I'm going to do presentations and hopefully write a paper on certain topics. Hey, in your first semester? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what you like. Eh? You don't like exams. So exactly, like, exactly. Exactly. Mm. So I just have to sit down and put thoughts together. And like it's something I do. So I said that this time it's more technical. So... I can't really conjure stuff. I have to like be factual with numbers, if there are simulations, if there are things that I have to do. But it just reminds me of my undergraduate time, how I hated literature review. <laughs> so, Is it a way you had to say Salah. undergraduate time, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> Salas was, Salah. was my Salah. group member. <laughs> he knows <laughs> firsthand <laughs> how we all suffered. <laughs> that class. But literature review, literature review. I can, I can so, count on I, one I, hand. I feel a number of times I went for that class. Mm-hmm. But literature review, I feel, is one of the most painstaking parts of writing it. It is. It is. I don't know. It is. Uh, I mean, especially those who think they are so wise that they write 13, 15, 30 pages of research papers. Just stressing our mm. life out. Because if, if the paper is interesting, you have to uh, read through it from um, mm-hmm. not necessarily back to back, but you have to scan through the topics and and see what actually means. Usually, it's not just one. It's not. Just, it's not just one body of work you are going to evaluate. It's several. So exactly, exactly, exactly. So besides that, I mean, I'll just be busy. But then, for me, it's relatively. It makes it relatively easier for me because I'm able to mm-hmm. like go through a lot of things quickly and really understand. And also, so I'm taking AI and IoT as uh, my interface. <laughs> Uh, and I was AI and IoT, Internet of Things, and I think no, my, as what my electives. Okay. Mm, and I graduated. So I did. I um, I think I started a micro masters in IoT, but then I was left with two courses and I stopped. Oh wait, was it was it the edX? Yeah, the edX, the Curtin University. Uh, yeah. So at least that in the way it goes, scholarships, <laughs> bro. Child. Were you able to finish at least some? I finished three out of five. Okay. Yeah, I, it, got, okay. it got tired. It got tired, so. And, and, and the I just left it. The rest of the, the change, I mean. No, I dashed it back to them. I mean, I've done enough. They should give it to another pool to continue. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so aside that, what, what, has, what else has been going on in your week? Ah, uh, 
Well, it has been stressful because we've had classes at the center and the classes have been in the evening. So sometimes I leave very early and come back very late. Even this evening, I'm just from campus. We organized one, one another session. So Speaking of campus, since, since you, are, you are in the thick of it, uh, how is you know, school with COVID and all? How is everything? Hey, I heard they've closed GIG. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So I'm, and also to cut, cut to, they stopped going for classes. But well, there was a yeah. COVID case? Yeah, I had some some students. Um, I don't know if it's students or I stand to be correct, though. Um, some some I mean, people contracted um, the virus, so they've halted classes for now. I mean, I mean, they are right. They are right in the middle of the action. What did they expect? Exactly, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Mm. So they only go for clinicals, but for classes because of congestion, they told them to 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 be. Uh, yeah, to hold um, and members actually make it very difficult to contain. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But then for us, um, nothing has come out publicly yet, so we are all praying for the best. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a bunch of you are literally carrying the thing around and are asymptomatic. But Wait, well, you know, when you say a bunch of you, what do you mean by a bunch of you? I mean, campus, I mean, the whole system oh. is not that closed. They say wear a mask, wear a mask, but no one is policing the system. I said a bunch of people are walking around with the thing. And, it, and when they go back to when they go back to the hostel, uh, they, they, oh, that's they, worse. They interact with each yeah. other, so because imagine like Brina, you want something, go to someone's room, and when I exactly your okay to you to wear a no mask. And, and, and how and about and how about the part where I mean the staircases, the rails, people handle it and all that. Charlie, mm. it's oh. just just anyway, anyway. That, that's that kind of picture of dystopia here. Yeah, no go help. So let's, let's just turn down. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's be the lights of the world. Yeah. Mm. You just as I am your light. Let's let's also be the light of the world. You are what? I'm your Who's light. light. I'm the holiest. I'm the holiest oh, on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, so what are we looking at today, Maxwell? Let's start with the GameStop. You want Elon Musk uh, pumping the price of Bitcoin by some seemingly cryptic uh, tweets and also putting it in his bio, his Twitter bio. So these are two main stories. I think we should cover a lot of ground there. <laughs> that was very funny. <laughs> it was like some buzz boosted. That was happening. <laughs> yeah. It's just by some... Just putting it in his bio. I mean, Elon Musk has gotten to the point where he's almost like, what's the word? Everything, he's almost like he might us. Everything he touches turns to gold. Like it's, it's, yeah. He's a definition of an influencer. Because yeah. I don't know if you, you guys realize, so when what are you doing a privacy thing, and then Elon Musk tweets that everyone should move to Signal. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. people on Wall Street, I mean, some retail investors thought that because like a computer is on the that's yeah, one IP on yeah. public. And, and so that stock price started surging. Totally. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Means. yeah. But do you know what they said? They said they said in as much as it shows the, the influence of Elon Musk, it also shows how the fundamentals of the market, equity markets have almost been broken down because they are now purely based on speculation and not value. Because the yeah. slightest thing could send a stock value shooting through the roof, as versus what are their earnings? Are they even profitable? Yeah, what not? So, yeah, I think there's another anyway, guy. Let's get, um, let's get to- the CEO of Bass Two Sports. Um, yeah, David Portnoy. Portnoy, yeah, David Portnoy. He's also another um, person who has been shaking the 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 stock market with his speculations. Yeah, I think it was an impulsive. Last last year, yeah, and, and they discussed um what, what, what he does. Anyway, so but I know uh-huh. the important just started going into stocks. Yes, and he he, that, that was his stocks. argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah, argument yeah. was that he knows nothing. Yes, his argument was that he knows nothing, but then because he's an influencer, <laughs> a lot of people listen to what he says. <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 and he even got I into a like was. He got into it. He was undermining himself. Because he actually, like, if you watch his YouTube channel, I don't know, he has been streaming himself on Twitter. 
some other, like you can see that yeah, Loki, yeah, stuff, like, he has really spent stuff, a lot yeah. of time like really trying to understand the stock market and then identifying loopholes around it. And, and given and, the and, and audience you know, they said, they said, yeah and they said the establishment doesn't like the fact that someone feels that they can just read up some info and become armchair analyst on wall street <laughs> and it's basically making nonsense of their life's profession they've dedicated their lives to, to become financial analysts and someone is moving markets with amateur analysis and stuff like that but in the end Charlie money is money so what the hell yeah. anyway uh, so what's what's up with the wall street yeah much sure. silas ah don't you really say the ball until the one says the ball sure. okay so um i think during the week all of you heard that um there were there was some reddit revolution i'm not a very active redditor myself who is here is anyone uh, I used to be, but I got busy. I have the app too. I I I, I checked Reddit once in a while, but I've never been active. Okay. Okay. So apparently, there are some forums on Reddit. There's a, a very notorious forum on Reddit called Wall Street Bets, where um, a lot of amateur amateur um, traders, day traders, long term traders. No, 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 not exactly amateur. You you rather call them retail investors. Okay, yes, retail investors. Are they not yeah, short yeah. sellers, That's brother? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Short, anyone can be a short seller. Okay, uh, these are special Wall Street, line. Yeah, the hedge funds and like Wall Street people are like the institutional uh, investors. And then people who trade over okay. or being who with Bitcoin and all that. Yeah, like okay. retail investors. Exactly. So, like uh, a firm that has a lot of retail investors who are in turn most mostly amateurs because they just dive into the meme culture. It's all about fun and <laughs> games. Nothing serious. They are not crunching serious numbers. Let's be honest. So, so, so on, on the firm, some are. The, okay, okay. You see, in the I end, mean, it's mostly it's it's too watered down. It's almost too basic for people to consider it serious finance. You understand yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. and the establishment or the financial establishment will look upon it and say that yeah, it's, it's it's finance but it's not how you'd want it's not professional you understand so anyway on those forums you see they, they, they began um the talk way back early last year about some companies and we all know that with the pandemic a lot of activities sprang up online mm-hmm. and i think wall street bets has been has been in operation for quite a time, but it wasn't the platform. It started in 2000, I think early 2010s or so. I, yeah, I think after, I read it on uh, Bloomberg. It was during the period, uh, the financial crisis in 2008. financial crisis. And then around yeah, the, the bond bubble. market crash in 2011. That's when it really became active. Good. Good. So it started, it started at that time and it gradually has grown. Then apparently, you know, whatever happens in the market on a broad sense, People take notice of it from people shorting companies that typically would have succeeded under normal circumstances to even pre-IPO um, news like let's say Airbnb is about to be public. Then how much are they valuing a stock price for? All those things were happening on these forums. You understand? And of course, these people don't have much money, like hedge funds, but they still have something to cause some chaos. So. I don't know. Typically, Wall Street Bets forum has not had this kind of mass movement or this um, this unison when it comes to the direction of how they trade. But for some reason, I don't know how this whole thing about everyone wanting to screw the hedge funders over just took effect. It's become like what did they call it? I read up a term. They said it's called a Streisand effect, where um, people didn't want to keep under wraps the fact that. Uh, Fans were betting that GameStop, which has been uh, almost like a 40 year old video game retail outlet, a brick and mortar, to fail. And they stood to make a lot. You know, when you short stock, it means you are betting on the decline of a, a company's valuation or whatever. So that's how things played out. And it became like, you know, big guys versus little guys. And it snowballed into something bigger. And now we are, we are seeing the effect all over. Now everyone is jumping on the topic from Joe Rogan. To even Ben Shapiro, AOC, Ted Cruz, yeah, and that's oh it. yeah, even though the White House, the White House is looking. 
Yeah, yeah, and Robin Hood went ahead to restrict trading. Can you can you believe it? They restricted trading and just allowed for those who wanted to close their positions, which means yeah, it was good it, for the short sellers. But it wasn't just Robin Hood. Are but then, but then, how did Robin Hood get get yeah. involved? I mean, Robin Hood yeah. is a retail, uh, it's a trading platform. Like, yeah. a, okay, you said let's take over. Yeah, so Robin Hood is almost like a middleman between the hedge funds and then like. Uh, Local investors, yeah, I said local investors, retail investors. Okay. So what 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 they do is basically saying that instead of you, because the traditional way of um, investments is to go and uh, if you want to trade on the stock market, you have to go to a to broker, share, yeah, like US Schwab or you have someone we call Charles. Yeah, uh, Charles Schwab, yeah. yeah, yeah, Charles Schwab, yeah, Charles Schwab, yeah. So you go to them and say, I want to buy like a Facebook stock, an Amazon stock or something. And then you pay a transaction fee on top of that mm-hmm. in order for them to trade for you. But this time around, Robin Hood, like, sort of, like, cuts, mm-hmm. comes into place and say, we won't allow you to do that. Like, no fees, no whatsoever. Like, they basically gamify their investment experience. But Robin Hood makes money by giving something they call, uh, what do you call, um, payment flow, order of payment flow. So basically, in the stock market, is like the way my source said, is based on people's perception of the value of a, a, a particular stock. So Robinhood basically tells, like, mm-hmm. I think Robinhood hedges, um, is it the Citadel Fund or something, two hedge funds? Mm-hmm. They basically sell uh, that data to them, saying that X amount of people are interested in. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to. I was, it's it's a very good point. So people wouldn't have come by that information. People are always wondering what really is the angle of Robin Hood by sort of democratizing trading, and they were like they are selling data because when you are trading on Robin Hood, the trajectory of major trades and that information would allow the big hedge funds or basically big tech or big corpo to guess the direction of the market and then go against it or for it and make extra money so like you're always getting ahead of the curve you understand yeah so that means uh, Robin yeah. who sells user data to these hedge funds yeah, yeah. this big I mean, but, so but it's actually something so that publicly, but yeah yeah but it's actually something that has been there like since but then they just build the technology around it um it's, yeah. it's the payment of order flow so for all these hedge funds and firms, they basically check the order flow. So if, like, let's say there's an investment firm that, like, people come and invest. So, like, Ghana, the example would be, let's say, Data Bank. Data Bank. Is but do you know that that allows for a bit, of, a bit of market manipulation? Do you know that allows for a bit of market it manipulation? It is market manipulation. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so that's how, like, things like 2008, the financial crisis and all that happened. Because basically felt that there was a lot of money in the system for people to use and then at the end the debt debts were incurred and then they expected the federal government yeah. to pay for that debt. And the bubble and popped. That's, yeah. That's what caused the financial crisis. Yeah, so that's how like Robin Hood comes in. So they basically been a middle money team with you. But then like can you find the entire investment experience without you paying any fee whatsoever. Mm. But then that means yeah. now who cashes out more than the the brokerage the brokerages, right? I, I mean, relative to one brokerage firm, you could say two, because they had for like more than two or three. But but yeah, mm. given, given the number of retail investors that have like moved to the app because of like the user experience and the ease at which like um it's also like democratized like investments in the US stock market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and can even do it from your home without making any calls and all that. Yeah, without making any calls yeah. at all. Mm. And 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 apparently, um, the whole the way things played out, uh, there was one hedge fund which bet against GameStop when the stock price of GameStop was around twenty dollars. As in fact, let me rewind it somewhere around I think April. Uh, GameStop shares were selling around is it twenty five cents or so. They were almost, <laughs> almost, they were almost dead cheap. Like they were almost, almost zero. So then, a lot of people started. Uh, of course, when you get to that point with the pandemic, people are not really going to brick and mortar. And in fact, all general game purchases becoming digital. 
we realized that there was really no future for GameStop. So then we have these so-called experts or analysts of Wall Street that, in fact, there's one there's one research firm called Citron. I'm sure Silas, you heard of Citron. Citron put out some research that a very damning research that said uh, GameStop and AMC and even BlackBerry these were yeah. doomed uh, enterprises. And, and Nokia as well. Yes, Nokia. So these were doomed enterprises that. Well, Nokia is investing in five G infrastructure. So how how can they be doomed? Are they not strapping for the future? Yeah, well, but currently their finances are nothing to write to my about. Yeah, oh, and, and, and BlackBerry basically sold its mobility business and moved has gone full soft service software or something. So now is is undergoing a lot of restructuring. But the stock market doesn't care how things look like on the ground. They would bet yeah. against you, whether I like it or not. So then with all these, uh, hey, God, I was on a roll and Obin has taken me off it. God. What was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, so um, a lot of people saw it that way. Hey, Charlie, Obin's former flu. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I said uh, a lot of people were betting against... Uh, GameStop and AMC, Nokia and BB because they felt that because of the pandemic and how general movement has been restricted, most of these businesses that basically uh, pivoted on human interaction or general movement. I think AMC is like a theater business or so, or an entertainment business or so. So okay. all of these businesses had their core structure being faced with peril. So um, then what what was the reasonable thing to do as a short seller or someone who's looking to make a quick buck of someone's demise was to short the stock you understand and when prices <clears throat> when uh, you shorted the stock and the prices decline it means that what you start to make a lot of money because you would get a, you get to buy the stock back for a lesser price so but when the prices of a stock when the cost of a stock or the value of a stock does go high, it means you that you shorted the stock or you took a short position, you end up having to pay what they call margin or premiums on that position. So that's where you start bleeding out. So there was one hedge fund called Melvin Capital that bet, which is valued at $12 billion, by the close of somewhere, before before Robinhood restricted trading, by the close of, was it Thursday or Wednesday, they had lost 30% of their whole value as a hedge fund. So they had to close that position and just cut their losses. So obviously this meant that, I mean, obviously hedge funds are handling money of monies of the elite, not normal people like myself and you, you get it. So yeah. <laughs> you realize there's, there's a lot of backlash and people were even see, suggesting that it was a 1% that was pulling the strings of platforms like, is it Ameritrade and Robinhood and the likes that those restrictions just were tantamount to or equaled market manipulation. They were given the short sellers a chance to recoup and cover their positions and pay the margins and the premiums. So clearly Robin Hood wasn't exactly Robin Hood if you think about it. Mm. But then why was Robin Hood then restricting their users from purchasing GameStop shares? Yeah, it was because um, so like as I said earlier, so Robin was basically a middleman with these hedge funds. Mm-hmm. And then that's how they basically Hello I think the network went south. Hello. So uh, like you make profits. Relax, well, uh, um, start 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 a submission again. Is that the network went south? I'm losing. Silas, sorry, the network went south. Can you please start again? Concerning explaining why Robin Hood was restricting. Then, yeah. can I can I go? Yeah, yeah. So Robin was restricting them because, like as I mentioned earlier, they said it was a middle fund. Hey, it's a middle fund. Yeah, technically speaking, middle fund, but uh, they are middleman between a hedge fund and the retail investors. So I think one of their partners. So like as Maxwell explained earlier, I'm sure if the brokerage firm is like betting that. Uh, GameStop, uh, AMC, Nokia, and BlackBerry, uh, their value basically drop. They stand to make profit out of it. Mm-hmm. And then with Robinhood selling the payment of other for that's how they will also make profit from that. So if the hedge fund is losing money, obviously 
Hey, you Robin Hood, they start to like lose a lot of money because like the brokerage firm that like you basically sell data to this is not a ton of money. I think in total 13, 13 or something billion dollars were lost. Mm-hmm. As of like as a result of of all the short sellers. That's a that's a combination of all the hedge funds that were short selling all the stocks. Mm-hmm. Lost close around 13.1 billion. So them losing money at that rate caused them to like panic and tell Robin Hood that they should close. To restrict access to either buying or selling, it did that, and it was a current value now. Twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Yeah. I, I think it reopened though as a result of the backlash. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. They reopened. Yeah. But yeah, it was. It was because like the one of the brokerage firms they partnered with was losing so much money. They had, they had to like call the shots to say, "Hey, we pay you so." You have to cut it so that we stop bleeding. So that's why Robin Hood restricted and then there's a backlash all over. But that's a crime. That's a big crime. That's a crime. That's criminal. People say they are suing. I, I mean, is that exactly a crime given that if if the one paying you that the one paying you is losing, don't bite it means they're also losing. losing. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Oh. But but exactly, but exactly. That's how <laughs> no, but it doesn't work that way, especially when you are providing a service. You understand? You no, said with the partnership they set so with the partnership they have, it doesn't make sense to win that round. Even though they preach a free market, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, I don't but, think but so how, because you see the market is think... governed by rules. You said it's a free market. What I like to know yes. is if you are bleeding out, you are supposed to allow trading when you restrict. Just because you offer a platform that allows for non-commission trading or a form of retail trading that is devoid of the huge commissions that come with institutional trading, it does not mean that the dynamics that govern the open market in the in equity spaces changes. Because when you say that, that means you are running a whole different form of trading. It's like exactly. free speech on Twitter. Free speech obviously is different compared to if you are on Parler app or if you are on Reddit. You understand? By the end, we're talking about money. And SEC is the oversight body for these money markets or these equity markets. So I feel that in as much as fundamentally the, the platform is provided by Robinhood, they can't restrict it at will because it doesn't favor their bottom line. Because in the end, it is people's money. You understand? I mean, it makes sense. I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. But then it is, the error comes in based on Robinhood's uh, business model. But like, yeah, basically sitting on the backs of these institutional investors to actually like make profits so that's what i feel, saying, a, bu- I feel a bunch of hot sh- i feel a bunch of a bunch of uh, upset hot shots made a couple of calls and yeah wanted to slow down the whole hem region that's what happened that's how i see because it. this is the same company that wants to go ipo like very soon yeah. and for someone who wants to go ipo you see about that you're going to see you need to leverage your partnerships with these friends to like I performed very well on the stock market. Ah, so that means you can buy Robin Hood stock on Robin Hood app. <laughs> no, they, not yet. They haven't gone public. No, I'm saying if so when they do, if, when they do, yes. Yeah, when they do, yeah, when they do, yeah. they will teach you. <laughs> but it's, it's, it. well, I, well, I, I heard about I heard about Robin Hood somewhere uh, in September last year, when they were saying that a, a child o- o- lost almost nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, let me know child. Yeah, eleven yeah. year old child. He committed suicide or so. I heard something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And they said, and they said, Democrat. Why? Why did he lose that much? And what pushed him to commit suicide? Yeah, you are trading, and then you basically make huge losses. You lost wow. more than fifty percent. Where did he get the money from? Uh, <laughs> because you need, right. to, did he use his parents' account or his own account? I mean, once you have access to, it's, it's almost like the way, like with any app, like once you connect your credit card or something to it, instant trade, it's, it's that easy. Because TD Ameritrade has some more restrictions. You need ID Yeah, but it depends on the card holder. And right now with, with the answers of like the digital card. So our example is um, an Apple Pay. I can connect all my physical cards to Apple Pay. Mm-hmm. Such that 
like let's say if I'm interacting with an app, uh, Ghana here, I would say um, Express Pay or Slack Pay. Yeah. I can easily sync my the cards on Apple Pay to Slack Pay or Express Pay, and then use that to serve as a connection route without like. So basically, you can go sync. on spending in a very unhinged fashion. You understand? Yeah. Once you connect it, that's it. Hmm. So there are no restrictions as to like your age or all that. Once you have a card with money on it and you have access to it, the number and then your CCC EV, that, that, that's and then expired gate. That's pretty much it. Then you're on your way to trading and all that. Just that, um, Robinhood, I think, access yeah, you yeah. for your social security number and some other details. Just yeah, like so verify who you are. Yeah, so I'm wondering how the child was able to go that far. Mm. Oh, well, wonder, wonder no more. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway. It, anyway, well, yeah, was, so, was so I was very saying sad that, uh, last year when I heard about Robin Hood and one of the chief complaints that obviously the establishments were, were of course, Robin Hood has had to deal with a lot of backlash because they feel that they are letting in a lot of people into a rather exclusive space. You know, trading was never the, uh, how should I put it, the hobby of regular people. It's people who have a very deep understanding of markets and all that. So it's like they're not comfortable that yeah. they can't gatekeep the system anymore. And Robin Hood has opened like a whole floodgate where a lot of people <laughs> with or without experience of all ages can come in and bet on the markets you understand so people don't like that and there are downsides to that you know with access comes the possibility of misuse so we saw that with the kid who obviously racked up 900k in debt and decided to of course take the low road rip so we, we saw we saw how that played out and how <laughs> An example of people who like really catch out during this uh Wall Street Rebellion was Shamat. He's a, mm -hmm. he's a popular investor. I think he's CEO of Social Capital. And he's a billionaire and yeah, a yeah, former yeah. Facebook investor. So he, so he invested like around 115K and then he cashed out 500K. <laughs> 150K <laughs> and cashed out 500K. Yeah, and there was even, there was even someone who cut, um, I forgot the initial trade value, but he cashed out like 60K is that to pay a uh, student debt loan? I don't know if much you, you heard about that. But you guys, you guys, you guys, this is not impressive. 53k ending up with 22 million. 50, 53k ah. by Monday. Hey. Ended up with 22 million by Friday at the close of trading. I saw <laughs> this on business week. 53k ending up with 22 million. By the end but of the day, I mean, it's crazy. Stuff. Really cash no, is it 22 million in cash? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, stock, once you bought value. it, then you trade. Right is it stock value or cash? Yeah, you could sell the stock. Now, once you sell, no, it becomes like cash value, value like Can actual sell. value. No, no, no. I understand. What Masha says is that getting, getting he still, he still, he still kept the 20 million ah, wait. in the stock. He still kept it. He didn't sell it. He didn't sell it. Or he cashed no, out. No, he's still holding the stock. He's, he's, he's still holding stock worth. 22 million. I can't see my whole stock work worth 5 million, rather. And I'll cash well, out. But looking at this, it makes sense to cash out right now. Like, just looking at the way, like, you people see, are you see, coming. You see, the thing is that the stock, the, the GameStop price is so volatile that if there's a major sell-off, the price will plummet. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, everyone is committed. If Elon Musk right now sells 20 billion of his Tesla stock, the stock price of Tesla will fall dramatically. So it's like you are just what someone calls it like a game of musical chairs. Eventually, you are running out of options. That's how come a lot of people are very cautious about buying stock that is hyped. Because once you once you, someone just pulls out from a major position, I mean it spells uh doom for everyone. most stockholders. And speaking of Elon Musk, what's happening with him and Amazon? Uh the space was. Yeah. Should I take this on or sell as you take it? Uh, I mean, the switch, if I didn't expect a switch card to be honest. <laughs> but what I can take it. Okay. Um, 
So apparently, apparently, um, th- this was uh, an issue that would not should not have spilled into public domain because this is like, uh, how should I put it? Almost what's the word? It's like almost intellectual property filings or something that goes on at the FTC uh, Federal Trade Commission level. So what's what's going on? Um, it looks like Elon Musk is asking for permission to bring Starlink Starlink uh, satellites into even lower orbit. You understand? Dan previously agreed. And Amazon, although they are yet to launch their project Kuiper, which is a key, K-U-I-P-E-R, which is like their version of uh, Starlink, Starlink, they are arguing yeah. that if they grant the permission for Starlink to lower mm. or to bring their s- satellites into even lower orbit, it will kill competition because then there's no space for their satellites mm-hmm. when it's time for, the, for them to uh, basically achieve liftoff. So now it's become like this back and forth that you don't have any working prototype yet, but apparently you feel a need to sort of stifle any possibility of Tesla the killing the competition. So they need to keep the, the space open for as, okay. as, as long as possible. So, so apparently, uh, Elon Musk is making an argument that you don't have anything in, that you are even about sending into space anytime soon, but you feel there's a need to keep the place open and he's stifling uh, the progress of Starlink, which should be a $30 billion business in the next 10 years or so. So it's like it's a race to occupy low orbit Earth Something like that. To to beam internet, right? To beam internet, low cost internet to but all parts of the world. Facebook, that, that Facebook was the first. I think Facebook tried um tried something like that. Or Salas, am I mistaken? Some years Wait, back. When they started anything. Yes, Facebook wanted to beam internet across Africa and India. Uh, to yeah, 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 but it, it wasn't like outside. Yes, we were good in uh um, that's that's google no, no that's that's google. Google. facebook wanted to do something like that where they have yeah, balloons in the air to beam to beam internet across okay then then, then i think google also did one but they, yeah i think i think google also did one but the this yeah, was part like of the, uh, just a couple um, of moonshot factory projects moonshot project yeah, yeah. I think X, but, but, Project X or something. I'm not too sure. Yeah, Project X. But the, yeah. the problem comes in when, back to the Starlink and the, what they call it, the Cupa, K-U-I-P. I think yeah. the, uh, Amazon's argument is that, like, if, uh, I think uh, SpaceX wants to like, change the design of the system. And those changes within yeah. orbit, like, people, like, create, uh, like, environments for, like, collisions to happen. And, and that is what yeah um, that that and, and that is what like uh, is that blue what's your name Carl? blue blue origin yeah that's what blue origin is fighting for because it basically means that SpaceX would basically like uh, occupy that space so if anyone wants to go into that space you'd have to like partner with SpaceX so actually like go into that like region because obviously they have the design for that system because they dominate that space. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Makes me make, make yeah. sense. And, and 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 the reason why Elon Musk is pushing back with that is because yeah, you know, like he, he has a tech ready to go into that space. But yeah, blue origin will probably take like the tech is ready, like ready, ready. But blue origin like development ready, team hasn't gotten yeah, but blue origin hasn't gotten to a level that they have gotten. So Musk is like, why why do you want to estimate for like Another five or six or seven years. So I was like, my team has basically figured it out. So since we already had a tech plan, let's try to do it and partner with us instead of like doing your but own. But it's scary, thing. but guys, it's scary. It's scary, Salas. I don't you think it's scary that uh, economic growth has almost mm-hmm. peaked to a certain level that now companies, in a bid to obviously drive their share prices up, have to look for even wilder projects and forget forget the fact that elon musk is an eccentric person and he always goes for the impossible but it looks like this is the direction you understand when you have a lot of money you have to start doing typically um 
yeah, I'm going to use this word moonshot projects. I'm going to, I'm going, you have to do typical these things like that. Look at Apple. Apple has basically peaked. Now they are thinking of autonomous cars because I mean, it's get a certain point. Phones won't cut it anymore. Although phones, there are, there are recent earnings reports, which obviously surprised everyone because they made hundred billion in revenue in over a quarter. Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, it, it, you, you re- it shocks me. I feel a lot of those figures are padded anyway. I said, then you, you start looking at it from the angle that then phones don't cut it anymore. If Apple wants to become more than a $2 trillion company, they probably have to add um, vehicles and start to compete with Tesla. Then they'll start launching rockets. Then they'll start trying to move it or meteors and stuff like that. Like, it's getting wild. Bro. On the name yeah, of but, shareholder but with, price. Yeah, but with that, actually, read. It, it all has to do with like not dying out or failing out because they don't want to be like the companies that started in the early um Ages of the technology. Like it started very strong. Yeah, yeah, like strong. IBM, General Electric, HP. Like those legacy. Hey, Toshiba, yeah, Toshiba, HP Toshiba is start- HP is still alive. It's <laughs> Toshiba that wanted to say, and I said HP. I beg go, HP is still alive. Uh, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they are not exactly. Top top, but oh, they are top. Oh, they're Spectre. I think they're Spectre and V line. They they actually sell. I mean, they are. Do you buy an HP? Um, I know some. You buy an HP? Um, I buy an HP. A couple of people who who use HP Spectres and uh, HP. That thing, did you buy? Oh, yeah, yeah, HP? I, I, no, I, I bought something else. Ah, but then the computing power, no, the computing power of the HP doesn't meet what I need. That's why I didn't go for it. But then it was on my radar because of the slimness. But then they have a dedicated graphics. But longevity, like HPs are not really noted for that. Exactly. But then I think they've 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 dealt with their hinge system. And also to now, most of their PCs also have their high level piece, their top range pieces rather, have um this aluminium um finishing, the aluminium body. So that means it increases their durability. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah. they, are, they, are, they are actually trying to, to, to stay within the area. So, 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 basically, so, so basically, companies have to evolve or they die. In, companies have to innovate. Right? That's not really evolved. Now, yeah. they have to really innovate. Okay. They have to always think about what's the next right. big thing that the consumers may need. Then try as much as possible. Because flashback, see the way people were actually shutting Nokia and Blackberry stocks. Somewhere yeah. around like 2003, 2005. The smartphone, hey, I say a smartphone market. The phone market was dominated by Nokia. Nokia yeah. 33K. Yeah. Wait. But yeah. because they didn't, they didn't innovate or anything, they've died out and now uh, Apple and Samsung and Google are uh, mm. like, basically sharing. And and now, basically, like, now a lot of you can't market play. Can't market play. Yeah, but but I recently read a report, I think by Canalis or something, saying that, or was it? It's one of these uh, stats sites where they were saying, even though Apple has made a foray into the streaming space, they still command a very tiny portion of the streaming market, even in US with Apple TV Plus. They are, they are around 7%, you understand? So mm-hmm. it will take yeah. time. And they, they were a bit late to the party, but it will take time. And they probably have to start either creating original content, although they do create original content, which obviously has bigger names, or they have to get that one hit series like uh, Brigitten or whatever you guys call it. I, I don't watch that stuff. But, but, but your shows are boring, you know? <laughs> I mean, Apple TV I mean, Plus. The they, only show... I, I think they've, they've snapped up all the good deals already. It will take time. Yeah, I mean, Netflix Netflix and Disney Plus have like all like the good deals. The, the only nice thing I watch on Apple TV Plus was... LeBron James um, production around like athletes and all that. That was like the only nice thing. But no, I think Apple is not investing in a lot of original content. Because Netflix actually is in debt. It's in, it's in debt because of original content. So, yeah, but, 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 oh, but, uh, can you, do you but, know but, but that's with the hope that they would turn out profits. Yeah, but they are turning yeah, out profits because Charlie. The, the movies are nice. Yeah, Netflix but, is, uh-huh. is spending almost two hundred million dollars on one, one single movie. But then the movie in the end actually is nice. Red, Red Notice with The Rock and Ryan Reynolds also. 
It's a very star-studded cast, so I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, I think no, they are but, betting but on it, it does as the future. If, 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 oh, it is the future. Yeah, because the only way they can compete, I mean, if Disney had entered the streaming market, they wouldn't have pivoted to like because Disney already has or own shows already. And then basically building like a streaming platform around it makes that like means that they can cash out on the content that is already. But Netflix doesn't own that content, so they they now have to like basically build it from the from the ground. So it makes sense like they pump a lot of money to it because you can't compete with Disney shows. And right now, like these uh, Marvel Marvel superheroes, where like mm. basically Disney has splitted it for but 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 for all no, the in all fairness, Disney Disney was a production house which morphed into into a streaming uh, a streaming yeah. platform. So yeah, they had so, they had a lot of so it, it, so, it just so, makes sense that like no, 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 they changed their distribution model. That's basically what they've done. They just changed exactly. their distribution model, so they still yeah. produce original content. It's just that now they they've changed how they are how you the user are going to watch it. You don't go to a cinema anymore. You, you just, get to serve hot right on your screen. Exactly, which is quite wow. different from what Netflix does. Yeah, but Netflix started by curating. But now they produce and curate. And so, Apple yeah, is just, just <laughs> Apple is just burying their head in the sand with this one. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, but, but, but now Apple, I think I don't know if their show is out here, but I think they signed a deal with Oprah Winfrey or some show. I don't know if it's out. I don't know. Can anyone check on that? Yeah, right. I like I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to watch Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> but oh, but I mean, in the, in the US, people might watch it. <laughs> Yeah, the old new know, age people who obviously don't spend too much on digital services. They are the yeah. wearing free stands, not us. Anyway, so, anyway okay. Hey, um, let, let, Apple TV Plus and Oprah Free announces their Oprah conversation. So I, I even the Oprah conversation. Mm. I even have that podcast. I subscribe to that podcast. Boring stuff. Anyway, I've uh, never heard more. Oprah soul conversations. Oh, it's it, boring what, stuff. Who, who has listened to Jerogan in a while? Uh, he's on Spotify. Who has that time? <laughs> I, no, miss I actually, I actually, just watch his... Like, when, when you mentioned that, I actually have Spotify. Like, I was about to, like, actually listen to it. I miss and it. Mm-hmm. This, How do you pay for hack. it? How do you pay for it? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not paying. I'm on a free version. But this is... I, yeah, I think this is a hack for anyone who wants to use Spotify. Again. But you're hacking me. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it, it doesn't break any rules actually. So when you when you okay, I use a VPN. No, 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 not even use a VPN. So okay, I think I've already. The point is that you just need a VPN to like just sign up, kick it. That's it. Once that sign up connection is established, anytime you are trying to go into Spotify, Google Spotify login. And then, if I just log in, it will take you directly to the web player, and then like you can start using Spotify without. Because if it just goes Spotify.com, it's not available in your country. Yeah, but exactly. That's have, what I get. Yeah, but once they know that you have an account with them, they will uh, they'll instantly like open the web player for you to actually like. Don't they have any any like bundled services like the way Apple has a family version where people can just pull source. Do they have any kind of bundled service that several people yeah, or devices? Can, they, they have, but it requires like that like music. You, you have to be on. I mean, if you don't use a VPN, you, you, you won't have access to that service. Wow. Anyway, okay, yeah, I wanted to discuss. Uh, uh Obin brought something to mind. Is Obin frozen? I'm not okay. frozen, but then yeah. Max, we are out of time. You see. Yes. Yeah, but this would be quick. Uh, so, uh, can I, can I yeah, just yeah, stop yeah. and, and, and something? Can I? End with it. <laughs> end with it. We are out of time. Yeah. End with it. Okay. You, you see, you guys talked about how um, Netflix is not uh, making money. And you talked about how typically they are burning through a lot of cash, all with the aim of customer acquisition, right? Yeah. And how do you able to do that? Hey, okay, yeah. I said, how are they able to do that 
because obviously they're an IPO and equity markets and equity financing allow them to have high valuation, even though they are not profitable like Tesla and the likes. Then you look at how it's in Africa, there's a stark oh, contrast where Tesla our so markets are equity markets. Cards, Is that no, no, but at least it, it gave them a leg up at some point. You get it. I mean, I feel it. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, Tesla stopped playing those cards. I get that, but at some point in time, it gave them a leg up because in Ghana, for example, where everything has to be straight up financing or not, and it, you see, it doesn't make the playing field level, it's, it's one of the biggest impediments when. You want to scale in this part of the world where startups have bright ideas that can challenge any global enterprise on that level, but they can't really get there because there's no financing. And the closest we come to is maybe venture capitalists. Even with that, the, all, all these monies come from outside. You get it. So this is an area that really unevens the playing field and makes entrepreneurship all the more hard in our part of the world, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so that thing media, no chance of getting an IPO anytime soon. But we there for yet. I'll probably short your stock. I'll uh, probably short your stock. <laughs> but I mean, if you mean in, in our part of the world, even if you go on IPO, even MT and crowd couldn't even meet me the 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 bro. They couldn't even meet the the stock. He shook people past. Uh, <laughs> I know, right from, from 75 tests, I think everyone was expected to go to 1C. I seven at 60 something tests. Hey, I don't know if they are hiding the money or they are underreporting reporting or what. Hmm. Yeah, that's what you Sikanashi. I should. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of this week's episode of the self-taught novice um i hope the discussions were worthwhile obviously game stonk game stonk yeah obviously they were so um thank you for listening um are there any last words guys are there any last words um i i thank you for anything just because that is that like Decentralized finance is about to hit the world big, so yeah. and everyone should everyone should educate themselves around like cryptocurrencies, yeah. retail investment. Ah, I had uh, in, like, Bitcoin, Bitcoin in, retros- in retrospect is inevitable. Who said that? I mean, Kyle, who said that? Max, Max it's Elon Musk. It's, it's it's right on his Twitter right now. If you check it, like. In a couple of hours. Wait, it's by you. Yeah, no, no. Just check his most recent tweets. If he's not been active, there, yeah. you see that in retrospect is inevitable. Then he put that. That's what combined with the Bitcoin, whatever emoji, sent the stock rocketing and all. Anyway, so yeah, like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, like Salah said, the decentralized finance is coming and. There's no stopping it. So yeah, you better educate yourself. And I'm shorting that in media. If you sh- if you ever should go public. Eh. In Ghana here, MT and crowd didn't beat not me. The point is that oh my. Years, nobody go short them. Nobody go short them. In nice shots. Who <laughs> <laughs> mama? Okay. All right. Who <laughs> mama? <laughs> In the rich words of our own, um, what's his name, Graham? Um, oh, what's his name? Chema Wuntu. Aha, in our own Chema to me. In the words of our own Chema to me. Whom am I? All right, guys. So thank you. And that's it from us. Goodbye. <laughs>